Hello dear friends, may God bless you all and may the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of His Holy Word, penetrate you inside of you in order for you to wake up to what the Lord says. Do you know why I'm laughing? Because I'm happy. I rejoice. I know there's a lot of people suffering, groaning. The people in Rio Grande do Sul, in Maranhão, the northeast side of Brazil in general, the north side, the west. There's a lot of people groaning all over the world. All over the world. However, we know that everything that is happening was already was already determined. It had already been programmed. We can put it this way. God already knew it all. He knew that all of this was going to happen. It shouldn't be happening. None of these things should happen. God made everything perfectly. Think with me. He created everything with perfection. He spoke. The Holy Spirit spoke. He spoke up and everything was created. Heaven, earth, everything, the very best. God's perfection was materialized in the beginning of all things. And then God created man, his masterpiece. He created man after his image and likeness. This is wonderful. I don't see in the holy text any reference that God has made everything after His image and likeness. Heaven, earth, the angels, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything, everything He created, I don't see it saying here that He created it after His image and likeness. I can't find it in the Bible. But men, human beings, man, a woman, he made them after his image and likeness. Isn't this wonderful? I mean, he made them perfect. Everything was perfect. And he placed them in a perfect garden. The very best was available to them. Everything was the best. There were no diseases, there were no infirmities, there was no death, nothing evil. No suffering, none of these things existed. There was only good. Everything was very good. God said, everything is very good. However, when men, despite of having everything of the best, they willingly chose to satisfy their curiosity and they wanted to know the other side, then we see what's happened. You, for example, you see the story of Solomon. Solomon represents, we can say, Adam. He had everything of the very best. He was a king. He was a wise man, the wisest man in the world, the richest, the most blessed one, we can even say. But he also made a mistake. He also made a mistake. And he spoiled everything. Therefore, dear friends, we see that nothing of what's happening is God's fault because God created everything good. Man is the one who spoiled everything. 
That's why the psalmist says like this. Look at what he says. You will understand if you read carefully and with attention Psalm 148. You will see what the psalmist used by the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit to give such vision of God's greatness. And he says, Praise the Lord. Who should praise the Lord? Who should praise the Lord? Then he says, Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. There may He be praised. Then he starts to describe who should praise Him. He says, Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him. So first, the angels. Then he says, Praise Him, all His hosts the heavenly bodies. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens, meaning everything must praise the Lord everything, even things that have no mouth, no ears, but everything before the Most High, all of His creation praises Him, all of His creation, all of His creation, the sun, the moon, the stars, the seas, all of God's creation praises Him. And you can imagine, if here on earth, despite of all the disasters that we are seeing, the natural disasters caused by human beings themselves, because the ground was cursed due to man. So, pay attention. Even the physical things, the material things that have no mouth or they have no mouth at all, they have no eyes, they don't have a mind, they can't express themselves, but everything becomes, let's say, it comes alive before God. It's as though he was walking in our midst, and everywhere he went, the chairs, the tables, the flowers would bow down to him. Things in general, cars, everything we see in this world, praise him. Because wherever he goes, everything comes alive and everything praises the Lord. Everything praises him. So he says, praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. Meaning that all of creation, all of the greatness of creation has life to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And He also established them forever and ever and made a decree which shall not pass away. His word. Praise the Lord from the earth. Now comes to the earth. From the earth, you great sea creatures and all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling His word. The stormy wind, the storms, they fulfill His word mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying foal, kings of the earth. Then he speaks about human beings now, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all the judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men 
and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He has also exalted the horn of His people, the praise of all His saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to Him. Praise the Lord. Therefore, dear friends, we can say everything, wherever God is, everything praises Him. Did you know that? A computer, a folder, pens, everything that we use, everything, everything, everything that exists, wherever He goes, this all praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Did you understand the spirit of praise? Praise is not that praise of, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, no, no. Praise is something that has to come from the depth of our soul. Oh, my Lord, I recognize your glory, your greatness. So I'm here right now in this exact moment. The sun is shining here and how wonderful, how glorious. I know that in Brazil it's still night, but very soon the sun will shine. And how beautiful, how wonderful it is. Everything praises His name, everything, everything. But not human beings. The only being that does not praise the Lord's name is the devil and his demons. And human beings who are ungrateful and irreverent, rebellious, sin, wicked, these do not recognize God. But everything else, everything else praises Him. But those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit have this understanding to praise, to worship the name of the Lord Jesus. So when you go to church today, to your church. Go with this spirit. Don't go there to just fulfill a religious obligation. Oh, I go to church because I have to. No, don't do that. Go with this spirit of praise in order for you to thank and magnify and glorify and exalt God for everything everything that He has given you. Despite the problems, the difficulties, we all have problems. We all experience problems, all of us. No one is, is perfect and, and have no problems. No, we all have problems. If David, who was a, a man after God's own heart, had problems, Abraham, who was God's friends, had problems, if Solomon, who was a wise, rich man, had problems, all of them had problems. The Lord Jesus himself as well faced problems. We have problems. We all have problems. But one thing that is very interesting, very, very interesting, is that God allows us to have problems in order for us to know and have the understanding and not forget that we are mere worms. We can put it this way. We are flesh, subject to making mistakes and weaknesses and flaws and problems and that we are imperfect beings due to the sin of Adam and Eve. Back then, we were born with the DNA of sin. And that's why David said, I was born in sin. My mother conceived me in sin. He was already born in sin. We were all born in sin. But praise God that the Lord Jesus came to give us the privilege to go back to the Garden of Eden, to live a different life with quality when 
we place the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and also a servant to His praise, a servant to His adoration, to recognize the Most High in our lives. Dear friends, it's not when we are in church only that we should praise God. No, we have to praise Him every time that we observe something beautiful, wonderful. Like, for example, the path of an ant, a little ant. You see, the path of an ant, it makes a path of where it's going to go and harvest its fruit. Everything is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Everything God created is beautiful and magnificent. And He, it's for His glory, for the praise of His name. Only He is worthy of all honor, glory, and adoration. And may your day today be for Him to be and to have His holy name sanctified, glorified, exalted in your life, in all of our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Tomorrow we shall be back here. May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen.